Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching and listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Really means a lot to me. This one's special. This is Karma Dixon. She, I met her at SOS. Um, she, I only got two minutes to talk to her, maybe three. It was really loud at the after party, but I'm, I'm so glad I got to meet you because I could tell right away there's something different about you. There was like this entrepreneurial spirit in the air. You were definitely a part of it. Uh, and you drove, you're insane. You drove from Wichita to Arizona for SOS. I did. I did. I left um, on a Wednesday after work and I drove overnight and yeah, it was quite a trip, but it was well worth it. It was the conference. A lot of coffees, a lot of Red Bulls or what? Um, I did have a couple of Celsius. <laughs> there were a couple All right. of Celsius consumed, but um, aside from that, just music and yeah, rolling the windows down a little bit. <laughs> I've been there. Coffee. I've been there. Vegas to Tucson at night trips are actually, they sound fun. They're not when you're, especially when you're by <laughs> yourself driving back. Uh, not fun, but thank you so much, Karma, for coming out. That's a lot of dedication on your end and your, your presence was known by many, uh, including me, even though we just talked for three minutes but we talked a lot longer now pre pre-recording and there's a lot of uh potential you're kind of just starting out your career but you started out as an ma medical assistant for those that don't know you are now basically like an in-house cra um soon to be cra most likely i mean that's kind of where these hopefully. things usually <laughs> had I, hopefully yes but knowing you like for sure. It's, you know, it's going to happen. Um, MA, there's a, like, I wish more MAs knew about research, but there's, su and being an MA, you tell me if I'm wrong. There's such a wide variance between the MAs that just kind of show up and the MAs that really want more for their careers and it's yeah. obvious to outsider but apparently you are one of the latter <laughs> but do you agree with this like yes absolutely so I I worked at two different clinics as an MA and they were very different um at the first clinic that I worked at I really did seek out additional opportunities. Um, I was, I didn't go through an MA certification program. I was just hired as an MA. I was a CNA before, okay. CMA, CNA, worked mm -hmm. in nursing homes, long-term care, home health, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they trained me on the job. Um, and I think typically in an MA program, you would do like phlebotomy and, you know, go through various different things. So I, sought out phlebotomy training um because that's not something that they really did at the clinic um that I worked for so I sought that out they were willing to train me on that and then I I actually went through various different like I worked in psych there I worked um just in the you know general family practice and then I also did um what's called annual wellness visits so with seniors and whatnot. So yeah. I got a wide variety of experience and yeah, that was really helpful. And I agree. Emmys, I mean, they can be very versatile and if you seek out opportunities, I mean, that can be really beneficial. The range of Emmys, if you put them on a spectrum of like the archetype, like just show up for work, you know, if that's like below average, the the bottom end of this extreme or the spectrum is like irresponsible you know take a lot of time off don't show up call come in late the the upper end of the spectrum is curiosity like what is there what else is there out there for me and you were your one of your offices i guess was adjacent to a research site 
Yes, yes. And so you were curious? <laughs> I was very curious. I, so that, yes, the second clinic that I worked at was attached to a research site. And I would always see the research coordinators walking by. They walked in front of kind of the nursing station that I saw at. So I was like, hmm, what do they do? Where are they going? <laughs> so I just started asking them kind of what they were doing, um, what their work was like. And I, I got a little bit of information, but it was still, I didn't really understand essentially what they were saying to me. So while I was working there as an MA, I started I discovered your video. I started looking just for information. What's a CRC? What's a CRA? What is clinical research? Like, what do they actually do? So I learned a lot that way. And then I just kept asking them, like, hey, just <laughs> let me know if you guys ever need any help over there. I'm happy, <laughs> happy to help, happy to, <laughs> you really? know, to over. But yeah, yeah. So eventually I did. I transitioned over and I started working on the research side is um, how we How did that work it. though? Like that transition, like, uh, was it like uh, over a period of a few months that you kept asking, like, do you guys need help? Did you actually do anything to like help them before? Or like, how did you actually make that happen? So I, yeah, I was, it was, a, I would say maybe a month or two maybe two because I think I just worked there from like October to February at the um on the clinic side as an MA so I was very curious early on <laughs> um and so a couple of them kind of explained I went over into their area and kind of talked to them and um, they kind of let me know what it was about. And then I spoke to the manager on the research side and just kind of said, hey, I'm interested if, you know, you ever need any additional help. And then I spoke to my manager and on the clinic side and we we kind of figured out um, a way to make that work. And so then I transitioned over as a clinical research coordinator and yeah, third, wow. I mean, and also that role was a little different. I think a lot of times clinical research coordinators will do, you know, they're seeing patients, they're doing the admin work, they're doing regulatory data management. Um, at this <clears throat> at this site that I worked at, it was there were admin CRCs and then there were patient facing CRCs. Mm -hmm. So I, I came in as an admin coordinator, so I was more communicating with the monitors, um, you know, responsible for updating or like bringing queries to attention because we had a data, we actually had a regulatory team, a data entry team, which was, wow. <laughs> that's a, a luxury, but um, also it benefits you to be a well-rounded crc so right ups and downs to the different models how long did you stay in that role or with that company as a crc i think about eight months eight months you were yeah. the admin crc the whole time yes so there were a couple of times well yeah there were times where i would see um patients or subjects and like draw blood or um, you know, I would be in the lab doing different things, but it was mainly the admin portion. Um, so yeah, I stayed there for about I think eight or nine months. And then I was able to move into a remote monitoring or in-house monitoring role, which is and where I am. The same place. That's where you currently are to this day. No. So uh, that was, yeah, I was a clinical research coordinator at the site level. And then I moved to an in-house CRA role at a CRO. Mm -hmm. And so, then now you're with your remote site monitor with the same CRO or a different? Same? Yeah. With the same CRO. Okay. Okay. So yeah. how long you been there approximately at this CRO? Uh, about a year and a half. Okay. 
That's a good amount of time um, yeah. for Gen Z. <laughs> I'm guessing the the <laughs> job hopping is real in this space, but I guess there's a lot we can get into there with your current role. But I, the CRC, when you were at the site, you probably, like maybe that planted a lot of seeds for you. It sounds like it was a bigger site if they have departments for regulatory. Um, um So they, I guess I don't really know exactly what a big site is versus a small site. Yeah. I felt like we were maybe mid-sized, but. How many also, staff did they have? Oh, maybe 30 to 50 there on site. Wow. I guess. That's pretty big. That's mid to big. Okay. So yeah. there were there were also satellite sites. So like one on yeah. the other side of town and then one in a smaller town. Okay. And a smaller town. So. And I'm um, guessing a few different PIs and. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at the location that I worked at, I think maybe there were five, four or five PIs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they definitely had a lot of studies at that site. Um, I myself had a lot of studies at that site and yeah, so I think it was a good experience. Um, and then moving, I guess, to the CRO. The in-house, yeah. Yeah, that's been a good experience. Um, they had a good, you know, onboarding and training. And now, something to bring up, though, that's important because you have a bachelor's degree, right? I have an associate's. You have an associate's? Okay. Mm -hmm. On LinkedIn, I saw uh, Wichita State. Um, okay. Yes. So no bachelor, but the ser because this comes up a lot with mm -hmm. MA, CNA. Hey, can I want to work at a CRO? but I, I have an associate that I don't have a bachelor's. Was that like a difficult thing for you to overcome during the interview process or just to get um, the interviews? I mean, I definitely think just to get interviews. Yes. Um, during the interview wasn't really brought up. So to get the interviews, it was a challenge <laughs> and you were, you were hired during like the hiring boom too. So I think it, it sounds like because that there was a hiring boom going on about a year and a half ago. I remember it well. These CROs were staffing like no tomorrow because of the COVID backlog and all that stuff. And a little bit of that is at least at the CRO level starting to change. Like, I think it's like a hiring pause maybe or. I mean, what's, are you seeing this too? Like not as much movement? The job market is definitely different now. It's, I, I mean, I certainly don't see as many of the positions that I saw like a year and a half, two yeah. years ago. Um, even like locally, local clinical research positions have slowed down, it seems, in this area. Um, mm -hmm. more, okay. than, more than the positions that I see for, like, CROs or... The sites sponsors. are still booming, I think. So I, I think sites, if they're in the growth phase, are still, still hiring. Like, we're actually thinking of hiring someone else pretty soon. So we're, we're really small, though. We only have five coordinators, and then me and Jaime. So... It's like a small team of seven and then our PIs, but we're like, we're still growing, but the companies that are still growing as sites are still hiring, but you're right. The ones that are kind of where they're going to be, there's no need, I think, to hire. Um, so you're in, you're an in-house CRA remote site monitor and you, you have a line manager and all that stuff. Has, has CRA come up in your conversations? What do they yeah. tell you? Oh, yes. So <laughs> for the role that I'm in, it was, it's actually like, you know, I think that there are several of the CROs that have academies where mm -hmm. you come on, you're an in house monitor, and then you move the CRA, you know, within a certain time frame. And so that's the position that I'm in. And um, just the time frame, I think, has been 
maybe extended. I hear a lot that sponsors are really wanting pretty much only CR senior CRAs and like right now yeah yeah so right now it's tough because of that market like the supply and demand went way in favor of like I think too many too much staff at the CRO level and if you weren't promoted to CRA now the sponsors are picky pickier and they want like senior you're right everyone wants like the best for their study and but who i mean we know junior series that are way better than senior series it's just on paper it's what the sponsor wants and they're ultimately the ones paying for the study so this industry definitely is focused on how like how do you look on paper how many years have you put into this industry it seems like it's not always about what you can bring to the table, but how much experience or how many years have you put in is right. kind of what I've found. It's true because one of my, um, she comes on video sometimes, Casey Figueroa, who was my CRA, CROC at my old site for about 10 years, actually, uh, until we sold that site. She came from like an MA school. I think she was a medical biller. But like the same kind of thing, associate's degree, became a CRC. Then when we got our CRO project, she became a CRA for us. So now she's like, you know, an associate with a CRA. And now she's senior CRA because she's done it for so long. So sponsors don't care anymore, right? But it's initially, it's, it's when they care. So that might be something you, that might be some challenge that you run into when transitioning to CRA. But maybe not. I mean, maybe they're going to get more lenient. Maybe some of the biotechs would get more lenient because you're now an in-house CRA for almost two years. So you're at that point where you can probably argue to get get in that role, too. I don't know if that's what your line manager told you or if they're honest with you, but that's, <laughs> that's what I see. Well, I I have a great, very encouraging line manager. She's Good. constantly providing, you know, support and information. So I think she's being upfront with me, um, you know, when she That's says- That's what I hear about your company. Everyone, Karma's LinkedIn's underneath. You can find out for yourself. Connect with her about your company. One of the good things I hear is the line managers are really good yes, for the most I part. I will say I have a phenomenal line manager, so I'm very, very happy about that. But I do think, you know, I've been told it's, you know, needs based. And mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the sponsors are saying that they need senior CRAs. So. <laughs> okay. So it's more the senior, it's more the issue with the senior than the lack of the bachelor's degree. I would say, as far as I'm aware, yes. However, I do, on a most job postings, they say they want a bachelor's degree. Sometimes they will have the caveat of or equivalent, you know, yeah, yeah. an equivalent combination of education and experience. So, right. And that's where you can just take more certification. Do you ever thought of doing that ACRP or the SOCA or anything like this? I am hoping to do ACRP soon. Yes, I Congrats. think I'll qualify pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. I think so. you should already. It's a year and a half here, eight months there. That's already over two years, right? I think you're right at that place where... So I was looking, I thought I did qualify, but I was looking more in depth on their website and it looks like they have a tiered system of hours. Uh, so if you have a bachelor's, an associate, if you went through like a dedicated clinical research degree program, like they're all different hours. Wow. They got fancy over there now. All right. Yeah. Shout out to ACRP. I might be there in May at the one in Anaheim. Are you going? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually have an event. Um, You're gonna drive to this one. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Yes, I'm gonna drive. Um, that event's in North Carolina, so I can't yeah. make. Yeah, I will drive I to really... that one too. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll go to Anaheim. Anyone's coming out there? We're gonna announce something soon with uh, one of our sponsors, but for like after, it'll be like unofficial, like 
party thing. How uh, exciting. Well, sad yeah. that I'm missing that. <laughs> I know. There's still time. We can still get you there. But you have a, something important going on, sounds like. Yes. It's a yoga retreat. Very important. Ah, uh, well, don't miss that. Don't miss that. This will be the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> so there's you're at this stage in your career where there are a lot of options. You got in during a hot market. You're now in a lukewarm at best market, at least for the CROs. Yes. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts for like the foreseeable future? Just write it out. You seem like you're in a pretty good situation. Like, do you enjoy the job? Um, what you do? I, I truly love my job. I, I do. I love what I do. I love the study that I'm on right now. So I'm, you know, they kind of say not to get comfortable, but <laughs> I am pretty comfortable in my position. So mm -hmm. I do, you know, I hope maybe in the next couple of months, the market will change. I'll be promoted. We'll start traveling and um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to predict, but for now, yeah, I would say I like my position that I'm in. You're in a good situation where you have, you're in and you have options. There's people right now watching this, listening, probably just wanting to get started. I recommend the site level. I think you would as well. Yes. Yes. For any, I mean, even I hear you talk about medical assistants a lot and they are phenomenal. They're the perfect candidates. I love to MAs. CRAs or CNAs also, I mean, if you've been a CNA, CMA, I mean, you have transferable skills that you can utilize to your benefit. So I feel like that's another good one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's likely going to start, especially now. I think you're going to have to find something at the site level and move your way up. Like the CROs are still hiring, but it's like, they're very picky now, right? Like who they're hiring. Yes. Yes. And I think that's pretty much across the board. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad you came out to SOS. Uh, any, any other piece of advice? Um, the job that you have is interesting because you're kind of like a CRA without the title. I mean, they call you remote site monitor, so you're monitoring, but you're not technically a CRA. Um, what are what's like your biggest likes and dislikes about this role? Well, I like that it is completely remote, and so you I work mean, from home, right? Don't go to the office at all. Correct. Yes. Nice. So completely remote. I've I've never had a remote job before this, so. It's a new world to me, and I'm, like I'm enjoying every second of it. I love it. You don't I, get, like, cabin fever? Like, I want to get out? Like, you don't never. go through that? No. Never. <laughs> okay. All right. I am happy to be home, happy to, you know, I <laughs> I feel like my company also offers a lot of, um, like, networking opportunities where you can just talk to other people within the company. They have a lot okay. of groups that meet virtually. Okay. Um, mentors are really big, so. Really? Yeah, I, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine being remote. I'm That's not awesome. one of the people who. Yeah, it needs to, um, I don't get cabin fever. I'm okay. very happy at home. <laughs> All right. What about some of the things that you don't like as much about the role? Or... Um, well, as you said, I mean, it, it can be hard to, as an in-house CRA, you do a lot of the monitoring things that a CRA does. You just don't go on site. You know, as a site owner, uh, someone who's worked at sites my whole life, when there is a value in a face-to-face -face monitoring visit, even like, I mean, we've worked with remote site monitors. I thought it was like an interesting um, idea. I mean, I see on paper how it could be effective. Like it definitely kept us like our action item, at least the important ones that we got them done because of it. But it's kind of like annoying as a site to do remote tasks. It's a lot easier 
when the monitor comes in person, you develop more of a relationship. Um, even our, our actual monitors that come in, right? When they're remote and they're texting us or emailing us, hey, you know, we need this, this and that done. It comes across like more annoying. But when they're in person, you just understand what they mean more. Like they're less annoying. And it's more of a relationship at that point. So I, I think that that is important. I don't think CROs or sponsors should ever get rid of in-person monitoring visits because you build that rapport, that relationship, and there's just something that Zoom hasn't replicated or Teams or whatever you use. And I, I agree. I don't think that on-site monitors should be eliminated. I just think that the barrier for remote to moving to an on-site monitor mm. should not be so high. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool if remote site monitors can travel like once every four visits with the CRA, just to introduce, hey, I'm the RSM. I know you've seen me on Teams, but here I am in person. You know, you get like, I th I feel like when you go back, you'll have like higher compliance maybe for the things you ask for because they've met you. Yes, and I do. I mean... I try to make sure that I'm not being annoying, sending like ridiculous <laughs> amounts of emails. Um, I try to make sure that I summarize everything that I need mm -hmm. in one email. I'm not reaching out to them multiple times a week. Um, I would you know, be the worst RSM. <laughs> I would be sending hundred emails a day with like one sentence in it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I'd be fired like in a week. Well, and your sites would not like you very much either. So right. I do, I, I want to have a good relationship with all of my sites. I want them to know that I'm here to support them. I'm not trying to be, you know, an annoying, you know, burden on them. This is an extra benefit to them, like where they can ask questions or where we're closing out action items. Yeah. And that's not always the most fun, but. You know, even if. Even if they sent you guys at the SIV just once, mm -hmm. I think it would go a long way. I, yeah, maybe maybe somebody out there is watching will do it at one of these companies. But um, I think the spon the small sponsors do it well. The there's small sponsors that monitor their own stuff that I work with a few right now. They do that well. You get to meet the almost the entire team, uh, at one point or another. Like this person comes out to train you. This one comes out to do a visit. This one comes out for something else. You end up meeting the team. I think that goes a long way as opposed to just Zooms and calls. I don't know what it is. I think it's what makes us human. It's like we still can yeah. differentiate reality from virtual. <laughs> and I would agree. I mean, it's always nice to know who you're going to be working with. Um, know who you're speaking to you know you can see their yeah. little picture in the team's yeah. bubble but it's yeah. not always um it's not always the same so but like I, I met you at SOS we talked maybe three minutes right something like right. that yeah we talked on the zoom for like an hour I feel like a month from now I'm gonna remember the SOS thing more than the zoom even though we spent more time on the zoom I mean, the party was pretty fun, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the fact that we're there. Yes. It's yes. like something that subconsciously, like, your brain says that was more important because that was in person. And I think I we mean, haven't got rid of that yet. Yes, I think we are humans. We're always going to be humans. So we're yeah. going to crave that um, in-person interaction, the yeah. personality you can't always tell over a zoom call um or you you can't always relate as well to someone over a zoom call so yes i think you're correct um i do i mean our world is moving to a very virtual like hands-off yeah. um type of i think i was just hearing you 
speak on a podcast about the AR Apple, Apple yeah. yeah, and doing stuff with that. And that's gonna yeah. happen. Like three years, I think I'll be wearing one doing these podcasts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I I do. I think we still need that human interaction. So having like going back to on site um, IMVs and going back or not IMVs investigator meetings yeah, and investigator like meetings. IMVs, having them in person um the way yes they... it goes a long way yes dang karma well it was so nice talking to you getting to know you everybody go connect with karma um she's got you know she's got something about her like who goes to save our sites obviously someone that cares about the people you work with like that says a lot about your personality no one forced you to go your company didn't even encourage you i'm guessing uh, <laughs> no just through you know listening to you and i i mean i was at the site it was hard it was hard to be a clinical research coordinator so i feel for all of my site you know all of my sites all of my crcs that i interact with on a weekly basis i mean i think that they're change is definitely needed. And so I saw that and I really, I thought it was important for me to be there and learn. Thank you for that. We need more people from CRO and especially on the frontline workers, you know, you're exactly actually who we want at the conference. We don't want the executives in the C-suite. We want the RSM. So we want the CRAs and we had a lot of them over there too. I know it's save our sites, we had a lot of CRO sponsor representatives from frontline workers, which was really awesome. So again, Karma, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Watched Everybody, it so long. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And now people are going to connect with you. They're watching you. You're an inspiration to many. Your career is just getting started. Um, so keep keep up with karma go to her linkedin it's underneath this video and in the show notes again thank you very much karma we really appreciate it everyone go connect with her bye-bye